Thank you. Wow, we. Everything we go through in life influences the way we experience the next thing. Part of my past experience was in hockey. I had occasion a while back to meet uh, ex-NHLer Wilf Paymon. He's a very big man. Wilf's francophone. He said, uh, I hear you played. I said, well, let's keep it in perspective. You played 1,000 NHL games. I played a couple seasons in Europe, one solitary game against Central Red Army with Trechak in goal. They edged us 16 to 3. <laughs> then he said, yeah, but you fooled them. You got paid. I said, well, for a while. He said, you know, I used to hate little guys like you because you could go faster scared than I could mad. <laughs> then he said, I hear you have two sons with autism. What's that like? And that's when our real conversation started. As Neil mentioned, Susan and I have three boys, two on the spectrum. Our oldest, Andrew, is working, studying, to be able to help all children with differences and challenges. If the spectrum was linear, I don't believe it is, but if it was, Michael and Matthew would represent opposite ends. One can't talk, one never stops. One lives independently, the other needs constant attending. Matthew's 18 now, but the early years were the most challenging. No sleep and constantly on watch. Life in our house was like having a blender with no lid. You know those nature videos where the raccoons get into the cottage? If you turned your head for just a moment, stuff would happen. Now, I'm not comparing my son to a raccoon, but if he'd had a report card in those preschool days, it might have read something like, Matthew shows a tremendous capacity in combining different foods. <laughs> like an uncooked bag of rice and a family-sized yogurt on the kitchen floor. Or, Matthew's inquisitive nature knows no bounds which could be a reference to the time Grandma was watching him. She thought he was playing upstairs in his room, and he'd actually climbed out the bathroom window onto the roof. Now, the no sleep part can be a real character builder. Matthew sometimes would go 36 hours straight, take a short nap, and do it again. During these periods, Susan and I would take turns watching him. One of these episodes, I was on the job. It was 3 in the morning on day two. He started to settle upstairs in his room. I thought, oh, thank you. He's finally going to fall asleep. I grabbed a blanket, curled up on the sofa. Our two feet hit the floor, click of a button on a noise toy, and everybody dance now. <laughs> Any outing in the community can turn into a real adventure. Way too many of our stories end with and that's why we're not invited back there anymore. <laughs> Anybody else been asked to leave the grocery store because your guy's elbows deep in a slab cake again? On one occasion, we dropped in on some friends. They were sitting around their pool. Matthew was about seven. He ran to the water's edge, stripped off, and demonstrated that there's a significant difference between peeing in the pool and peeing into the pool. And that's why we're not invited back there anymore. <laughs> Navigating the healthcare system can be a huge challenge. On one occasion, Michael had a friend over for dinner. His friend's dad is an emergency room doctor. Their family also has a nonverbal autistic son, so he gets it. Just after he had picked up Mike's friend, we get a phone call from the respite home where Matthew had been spending the evening. Matt had fallen off a swing and was favoring his wrist. So we immediately picked him up and deliberated about whether to go to the hospital. But uh, he was using both hands and he seemed content. We decided to wait. The next morning when he woke up, it was clear that we had a problem, so off we go. So our drill is I drop Susan off to get us checked in. I circle the block with Matthew until she calls to say they're ready. He doesn't do waiting very well. And we walk him in. So as we're going in, who comes around the corner but Dr. Dave? He's working. And he says, please tell me it's not food poisoning. <laughs> I said, no, your guy's all right. Said, we explained about Matthew's wrist. He did a quick examination and said, we're going to need x-rays. He said, can you go with him? 
I said, can you think of any other way we might get this done? <laughs> so off we go to x-ray. Dr. Dave took the time to escort us, instructed the technicians, he returned to emergency. We go into the room, Matthew flops on the floor, he's not going anywhere near the table. So the technician says, all right, well, let's see how far this thing will reach. And she says, you know what? If you hold Matthew and immobilize his elbow, Susan holds his hand, I can slide the plates under his forearm, we'll use a stool for a flat surface. So we kneel on the floor with Matt, they drape us in the lead aprons, and we got four usable pictures in six tries. Back to emergency. Susan goes off with Dr. Dave to look at the pictures. When they come back, I hear laughter. And I said, good news, it's not broken? Dave says, no, he's got a hairline fracture, and Susan's got a bone chip on her thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Two for one, no extra charge. <laughs> now, one of the side effects of parenting a child on the spectrum is that it can be socially isolating. It's difficult to entertain. One of you is constantly monitoring Matthew, while the other apologizes repeatedly. I'm sorry he took your drink. He likes to look at the bubbles when he pours it on the floor. I'll get you another one and, and a towel. Uh, oh, I'm sorry he took that food off your plate, but you know, it's pretty cool. He's never eaten that before. <laughs> I began today by talking about hockey. I still play in a recreational league. My friends and teammates have been tremendous supporters of every fundraising initiative Susan and I have ever been part of. Hockey also has taught me transferable skills, like perseverance. You show up again tomorrow, regardless of what today's result turns out to be. Like teamwork, that regardless of what happens, we can be allies for those on the spectrum who have their own voice and advocates for those like our Matthew who don't. And finally, it's given me an awareness that some days the magic works and some days it doesn't. But on the days that it does, it's wonderful. There's a saying that as a parent, you're only as happy as your least happy child. Right now, all three of our guys are doing well. So for the moment, the magic works. So we cherish those times. And we hope you can too.